Hey YouTubers, this is Tony with Bayberry Mini Trucks. Today is Monday. Let me get out of the wind here. Today is Monday, March 18th, 2024. And this is a video for Damon in Tennessee. And uh, <clears throat> Damon lives in Chattanooga. And he is interested in this 1993 Honda Acti four-wheel drive, five-speed with air conditioning. And I did test the air conditioning on the way over, and it works, meaning on the way up the dirt road. Oh, and here's the best part of all. It has 16,087 original miles. So let's check this out. This is going to be nice. All right. So first thing we're going to do is go around the perimeter of this windshield and look for any damage. And guys, I apologize for this strong wind. I know it's pretty hefty, uh, but it's it's uh, hopefully not messing up our video too much here. So here on this, you can um, sand them and paint them. These are metal. Now the wiper blade refills themselves um, are 15 inch refills and those have already been replaced, I believe. Um, but these can be sanded. You know, you take them off. But you do. Ah. Well, get a screwdriver and pop that up. And then it's hinged. And then you can undo a 12 millimeter or 14 millimeter. I think it's 12. And then they come off. So now, <clears throat> let's look at the condition of the vehicle. On the front of the vehicle, we have one ding right there. And it is in really good condition. Now what we want to do is come down this door pillar and see. Yeah, get that open. Oh, there it is. Ha <laughs> ha. 14 millimeter. So then you, you undo that, and then that'll come off. There you go. I'm so glad I got that. All right. So now we have a, uh, you can see where there was a little nick there, and they dabbed it with touch-up paint, touch-up paint, and a ding there, and a ding there. Very tiny dings, but dings nonetheless. Got a ding there and there. Also small dings, and we have a scrape, kind of a crease right there, and this, a crease there. Just a little contact right in this area. This is called the door step side. Here, we've got a little oxidization right there, and here you can see um, the edge of the door also, but it's not any cancer so it's not it's just on the surface now we're going to look at the tire tire looks very good and we're going to look under here under the inner fender that's dirt and now we're going to look here at the bedside panel and we have a ding here, here, very tiny. A ding here. And a ding here. Now let's look under the, the mat. Let's see what the mat has done over the course of its lifetime. Aha! That's actually in very, very good condition, the bed. You can see, I mean, it's just got a lot of debris in here. This is just debris. Um, this is surface rust here, where something rubbed the paint, and just a little flat rust. That's what that is. Now, let's look at the engine cover. Let's do a kind of condition that's in. Very nice. So this bed mat, as tired as it is, 
has really done its job preserving this engine cover. It's really done a good job preserving it. Now this is rubbed, the paint is rubbed off. That's just surface rust, but the paint is rubbed off and it's got the identical thing right there. So, you can see right there, same thing. Surface rust only. The engine cover is in fantastic condition. See that? No rust issues. And now let's look at the tailgate. The tailgate has a ding there, a ding there, and that's it. Plastic is in good condition. Well, you can see here where the paint got rubbed off, just um, and touched up there. Now let's look at this side. So it has some contact right there. You can see there, you can see the reflection. I'm trying to show you the reflection. So there's a little contact right there and a ding here and a ding here. The battery cover bolts are present, but it did get broken right there. They usually don't come with a battery cover or maybe, maybe, I don't know, 40 or 50% of the time they do. Um, but it does have the bolts. Those are Honda battery cover bolts. <clears throat> I wonder if this has air conditioning. Oh, it does, it does. That's right. Okay. Now we're coming down the door post and a little touch up spot right there. We got a ding right there, and that's it. The rest looks good. This is the inner fender. Good looking tire again. That's the inner fender, and it looked good. Here is a shot under the door. And now, Look under here, that looks good. That's sound deadening material. And just got little surface rust there. You can see where they patched, uh, not patched, touched it up. But no cancer. This is your radiator cap on a Honda. You undo this, and then underneath is your radiator cap. The seat looks very nice. And it actually has the original jack windshield washer fluid in the jack handle. Very nice. This is interesting. I don't know what that says. All right, now let's look at the driver's side. The antenna's in good shape. You just want to keep that down so that you don't back up and snag it on something and snap it. Now, on this side, we do have some surface rust under here that's not rust through, but we do have some corrosion right here. It, it has a, um, a little rust through spot right there, you can see. About the size of a pencil eraser, and right there. And this is surface rust here. So if you wanted to, you could get a wire brush and just brush the whole thing and then just cover it with a good quality, like a uh, Valspar or something like that. Looks really good under here. That is sound deadening material. 
This seat actually is in really good condition. No tears at all, which is kind of remarkable. Nice. All right. Now, let's take this for a drive. Look at that U-turn. I used to think Hondas that you'd pay a price since they were always all-wheel drive. But it, I thought you'd pay a price in fuel economy and in the turn radius, and neither are true. You don't pay a price with either. So the purpose of this video is to see how it drives when it reaches top speed. And... Um, and then we're going to turn around and come back up the hill and see how it does coming up the hill. And we're going to put it in high gear and, um, and then see how it does coming up the hill in, 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 in high gear. So now we're going 60 miles per hour and it feels great. No problems. That's what you want right there. And it feels really good. And that's the maximum speed. You know, you'll hear people say, oh, my mini truck goes 70. Mine goes 80. Don't ever do that to your mini truck. The mini truck really um, is designed for a lot of things to be done really well. And going 60 is the maximum reasonable speed for your mini truck and uh, you just don't want to push it beyond what is designed you know intended purpose is so now we're going to come back up this steep hill and we're going to go into fifth gear that's fifth gear now we're going to see how it behaves, and uh, so we're um, now we're going to go around a ninety degree turn and see what it does. So now we're going thirty five kilometers per hour. <clears throat> up a very steep hill in fifth gear, which is remarkable. And we are actually increasing in speed. Um, we were going 35 kilometers per hour, and now we're going 40. And that is a really remarkable thing. We're increasing, we're accelerating, which is just incredible. Remember, we're in fifth gear going up a steep hill. We're not exactly bounding, you know, doing zero to 60 in six seconds, but we are increasing in speed up a steep hill at a ridiculously low speed. So that is a successful test drive. So, um, was it Damon? Yeah, Damon. Um, and Noah, if you guys are interested in this vid video, let us know. You can reach us at 336-777-9957. And uh, just let us know if you'd like to buy it. Uh, we have serviced this truck with full synthetic uh, engine oil. And um, so uh, we've also replaced the fuel filter. I'm sorry, the oil filter and the air filter. Um, and we um, use non-ethanol fuel in this. Um, we've started using non-ethanol fuel because we don't want it to, uh, you know, have any problems if it were to sit for like three or four or more weeks. Uh, we just don't know and we don't want to take a chance. And many trucks, listen to this, in Japan, do you know that they have two octanes of fuel? Just two. You know what they are? 98 and 93. So... I have changed my opinion about fuel.
since the manufacturer designed their trucks with 93 octane in mind, I recommend that we consider 93 octane. Um, because they've got to know a lot more than we do about that. But they're not high compression. But you'll notice, try 87. I mean, we've been using 87 for 14 years. No problems. But try 93. I think you'll notice a little bit of a difference. And it's not that much more money. But guys, I appreciate you um, watching our video. And Damon and Noah, let us know if you're interested in this truck. Thanks for watching our video.